Alright, so let's take a look at the architecture for how we make a voice controlled game before we jump into the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a microphone obviously and from that microphone we're going to take and get a set of audio frames in a loop over and over again. So we're going to take that set of audio frames at specific intervals, right? And then we're going to pass it into Audio's pitch detection algorithm. And so outside the other end, we're going to get a pitch frequency in hertz. So if you have a lot of background noise in your microphone, you won't necessarily uh, want to detect that pitch and use that pitch as the pitch that's coming from your user's mouth. So we'll also add a volume threshold. So in other words, you'll need to sing directly into the microphone in order for it to register as you being actually singing. So we've got a frequency and then from that we need to figure out what the vocal range of our user is. So each person has their own basically range of notes that they can sing. So we'll open up to a program where you sing the lowest note you can, you know, low, and then right to the highest note you can, so as high as you can get. Uh, I'll try high, I guess it'll get pretty embarrassing. This whole, this is a fun project. Ah! So you might get that high, or you might go higher depending on how far you are. So from those two notes that we'll use, and we'll convert our pitch or our frequency into a musical note, using this library called Music 21. So Music 21 allows us to specify a frequency for a pitch and then it will tell us how far away from an actual note that pitch is. And the unit we use for determining a pitch's uh, deviance from a frequency is called cents. And so a cent is a hundredth of a half step. If you're not sure what a half step is, Take a look at the blog post, and I kind of go into a little bit of detail about it, what a half step is. But basically, every note we have doubles in frequency, and every time it doubles, it represents itself over again, all over again. And so, in between these doublings of each frequency, there's these 12 steps that we call half steps. And so, our uh, musical notes go in increments of half steps from one note C all the way up to itself C again in the next octave. Alright, so let's get back to this. So once we have a vocal range for our singer or our player, we can then establish a range of where the notes should lie for that singer. So some people can do maybe, you know, two octaves of notes that they can sing and then other people can do five octaves of notes that they can sing and five octaves for a real singer is something that's like you know best in the world for um, vocal range because I think for real singers you need to be able to hit all the individual notes from the lowest to the highest and everything in between so it's really much more complicated than what we're doing for the purposes of this game and then once we have a range for all those notes, we can say on the screen where that person's uh, current pitch is relative to all the pitches they're capable of making. And so with that, we can use and create a y-axis for our bird to live on. And so when you saw in the intro where I'm singing through the places where the bird should go, um, that's me in my established vocal range working through the game. Alright, so that's kind of the overview. Let's jump into the code now. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is kind of talk a little bit about how I've broken up um, my files and how I didn't really jump straight into having this sort of voice control out of nowhere. Okay, so the very first thing I did in tackling this problem of building a basically program you can control with your voice is I broke it down into tiny, tinier problems than the biggest problem, right? So the big problem is how do we write a program that you can control with your voice? And so the smaller program that I started with 
is, okay, how can I get the current note of the pitch that I'm trying to sing and how far away I am from that actual note? And so what I began with is this distance pitch program. And so I took the very basic bare bones from my existing program that we went through in the Pi Game Guitar um, video synthesizer. So you'll see it's the exact same setup for the beginning of the program. We figure out an audio input device. Um, the one thing that's different here is that I import this Music 21. And so Music 21 is one of those libraries that I found that is just incredible. It's exactly what you'd want to use to work with any sort of musical data. So the problem that I had coming into this was, all right, so music in general is kind of mathematically a little bit weird in that it doesn't have like a real mathematical pure structure to it. Like one of the things that I address in the blog post is that, you know, notes in Western music start from the center of A440. And so this is supposed to be the tone around which all the other um, musical notes come out of. So we could pick an arbitrary note for A to B at, um, but we didn't. We, we all agreed that 440 is where it should be. And so you would think that based upon the center, each of the notes would repeat based upon A. I mean, we have notes that go from A through G sharp, and then it repeats on A again. But instead, the notes all repeat on C and start from C. So the notes go up from C all the way up through to A sharp. So, I mean, I'm sorry, all the way through to B. So it kind of makes you wonder um, where the logic is to it. And so Music 21 takes care of all those weird kind of gotchas with that. So it has this pitch object that you can just set to a frequency and then you get another method on it and it just returns in sense how far off from the perfect pitch that frequency is. So it's really awesome. Uh, really awesome work from one of the professors at MIT. So that basically made this whole program much easier to write once I figured out it existed. All right, let's get back to the code since I'm getting a little bit distracted by how awesome Music 21 is and how crazy Western music is in general um, from, a programming, from a programmer standpoint at least. All right, so the first thing we do is we check the audio input device, right? We create this Pi audio object. We open up this audio stream we create this audio pitch detector, which um, is kind of the first time that we'll see it here. Let's let's actually fix, fix this tab while we're here. Let's have it line up a little bit better. Um, and then we set a unit. Um, we say, hey, we want to get this back in hertz because again, that's what um, Music 21's pitch uh, expects for a frequency. And so the next thing we do is we have this get vocal range. So again, we're going to go from the lowest note to the highest note possible. And so there's a few things to notice here. So I set a scent range that you can deviate from for still counting to hold that note. Now remember, a scent is one one hundredth of a half step. So that's pretty, pretty precise for somebody to have to sing, especially for somebody like me who's not trained in singing at all. So we set a set scent range, and then we set a note hold. So this is how many of those input slices in a row where we hold that note inside that 20 cent range. All right, so next we kind of jump right into this loop. And the loop is we get the set of samples from that stream, we send it to the pitch detector, and then we check the volume threshold. Now remember at the beginning of the video, where I said we needed to have a volume threshold in order to keep the background noise from interrupting and being pitch detected. So that's what we do here. You might have to change the numbers here um, depending on your microphone. And so then we, we check if that, that volume goes above that volume threshold. And then if it is, we check to see that that scent deviation from that perfect pitch is within that um, scent range that we set before. If it is, we keep track of it and we accumulate and count each of those notes. So with that, we wait until we have a low note first, and then we set the range low to that note that we've held for 20 samples, 
and then we do the same thing for high. And so there's no checking in this loop right now if the note is really higher than the low note, but in general that would probably be the right thing to do. And I'll probably end up doing that in a later um, version of this. So yeah, with that, I have a basically command line program where I print out, ask somebody to print to you know do the low and the highest frequency that they can sing, and then I have my basic distance for how big their vocal pitch is. All right, so that's the big one. Then we get the notes position on range. So for this, we need to have obviously our low note and our high note. From that, we can take in and do the same loop we did before where we have this audio stream um, and find that note. So once we find the note, we can find out how far away it is along the line from the lowest note to the highest note. And then we could figure out the scent distance and then have a decimal. So it'll go from zero to one. So zero would be the lowest note they can sing and one would be the highest. So in between we'll have a decimal and then we can multiply this decimal by the screen height and then we'll have a Y position in order to put our bird. And so that's basically how the voice control part of the program works. All right, so now that we know how we went through from first getting our pitch to turning into a note, to establishing a vocal range, to finding a specific note sung's position on that vocal range, let's look at how we bring together those two big functions into our existing program. So once I had that distance pitch program, I split it out into its own Python library that I'm, that I'm gonna call voice controller. And so voice controller um, basically just took out those print statements and added a Q object. So I created this Q object so that just as we did in the Python video synthesizer program, um, we'll be able to run this on its own thread separate from our Pygame thread. So I have this voice controller and if we open up singybird.py, which is the game code, you'll see that we have from voice controller, import, get vocal range, position on range, and so get vocal range is what returns that vocal range for our singer position on range, which returns from zero to one again, where on that range the current note being sung is, and then Q, which is that Q that's going to pass messages from that other thread running, and then stream, which is just that audio stream so that we can close it after we're done. And so you can see right away we have this from threading import thread because we're gonna run that voice controller on its own thread in general. Um, and then it's really just a very straightforward Pygame program. So we import Pygame, we import a few tools, and I should say right now this um, code is very similar to and is basically, you know, pretty close to a copy from um, Flat Pie Bird, which is a Flappy Bird written in Python. Um, and so this has things like hit detection built into it, but I haven't hooked them up yet. This post just ended up being so big and taking up so much time that I just wanted to get it out um, in chunks so that we could see how you build an entire program and how you add in um, different libraries so that you can kind of break up your code more generally. And so we'll probably end up breaking up this code too once we do it. So I've taken Flat Pie Birds and I'll link to Flat Pie Bird in the blog post and probably in the video too. Um, so I took the images they have. So they have images for the, the Flappy Birds and for the pipes and for the background and the foreground. And so the first thing we do is we open up all of our images, create what's called a hit mask. And so this isn't implemented yet as of this video. It may be by the next video if you're watching this in the future. Well, you're definitely watching it in the future, but depending on how future you are, um, it might already be finished at GitHub or not. So yeah, so we take in all these images, we have a hit mask. So a hit mask is what will determine if our player has hit a pipe. And so at the beginning of this video, you saw me singing and there was no hit masks at all because it's way too difficult for me, at least at this point. 
Um, so yeah, let's let's keep going. So we load up all these images, convert them to alpha. Alpha is gonna make it so that they're all see-through or transparent. And then we create these pipes. Um, you'll see the pipes are the things that get in the way. We load the background. This check crash comes directly from Flat Pie Bird. Uh, pixel collision, same thing. Get hit mask, same thing. Get random pipe, same story. Um, this draw pie game is kind of the main loop. And so I've simplified the parts of the Flat Pie Bird for right now. And so we have a loop iterator to just keep track of the animation for the main Flappy Bird. Um, and then we basically move the screen, uh, create new pipes as each pipe enters to the end of the screen. And then we just basically, through every loop, check to see if there's data on the queue. You know, is there a note a person is singing within that sent threshold? And if there is, and then here's the logic to just put that on the screen, we multiply the screen height times that person's position from zero to one again, and then we subtract it from the screen height. And this is just because rather than going from, um, you know, the screen height to the to the lowest value zero, uh, Pi game works in the opposite way. The the very topmost part of the screen is zero, and the very bottommost part of the screen is the maximum of the screen height. So that's why we do that subtraction there. And then otherwise, if there isn't a note being sung, we just let the birds start to fall. And so you'll see in the video, like there's a, a couple points where I'm not really hitting a note at all, and so the the bird will just kind of start to fall in that in that case. And then here I do the check crash, but it's not hooked up to anything. Um, again, in the next videos, we'll go through and build out an entire game that you know is actually playable. At this point, it's just you know a fun way to see how terrible you are at singing. So then we go through each of the pipes, um, move them, draw them, um, and then you know we just draw and um, move our player across the screen. The screen, so it's pretty straightforward. And then um, you'll see. So when I start up the program, I don't know if this is this isn't in the beginning of the video, but when you start up the program, you'll have a blank Pi game screen, and that's because you're going to need to get that vocal range first. And so you'll need to sing that low note and then the high note before you'll be able to get into this draw Pi game loop. So hopefully we'll fix that and we'll get something a little bit more user friendly in the next video. All right, that's it for now. Um, there will be more. Thank you for watching.